So YouTube, team keep it clean. Thank you for 40,000 subscribers. I appreciate it. Uh, we hit 40,000 subscribers last night, and that's just a, uh, that's a crazy milestone, man. And I thank you all for being a part of it. I thank you all for supporting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, now, getting back to business, man. Of course, we know that the Ravens, they signed wide receiver Sammy Watkins last night. And that sort of eased a lot of Ravens fans. Now, there were a lot of Ravens fans, too, that were like, oh, well, this is not enough. And in my opinion, I agree with that. It's not enough. Now, we, of course, hope Sammy Watkins does his thing. And we hope Sammy Watkins balls out. And we hope Sammy Watkins exceeds any expectations that we all have for Sammy Watkins. But will the Ravens be like, all right, cool. We got a receiver now. Moving on. Will the Ravens be like, all right, cool, that's enough. Don't need to add any more. Will the Ravens be like, all right, cool, yeah, we, we good on receivers now. Because adding Sammy Watkins, adding a veteran at the wide receiver position, this now takes away some of the pressure from the Ravens when it comes to the draft and even when it comes to the rest of free agency. Because they now have this offseason, they've added Sammy Watkins, They've added uh, Deion Kane, and they've added Benjamin Victor. All receivers from Florida, by the way. <laughs> I love it. Love it. But is that enough? My opinion, no. Again, I still think they should make another move at the wide receiver position. Again, you're getting ready to pay your quarterback. You're getting ready to pay Lamar Jackson. So you need to really go all in for Lamar Jackson, and you should not be done. Whether that's through another uh, veteran wide receiver via trade, not free agency. I know there have been a lot of people talking about Antonio Brown this and Antonio Brown that. My opinion, I do not think, not that I do not think they should, I would love if they did, but I do not think the Ravens will sign an Antonio Brown. I, I don't. Not at all. And the reason I say that is because last year, Antonio Brown, he was a free agent. He was eligible to return to the NFL. And he even said multiple times, hey, I would love to play with Lamar Jackson. I would love to play with Hollywood. I would love to play on that team. And he's from Florida, too. I mean, he would fit right in. And y'all know we, we lobby for him. We're like, hey, bring on Antonio Brown. Bring on Antonio Brown. But the Ravens, they were like, mm, uh, yeah, okay. Mark Ingram talked about it when he was on the Ravens. Lamar Jackson talked about it. Hollywood talked about it. All of them talked about it. They say, oh, yeah, bring Lamar, I mean, bring Antonio Brown on. Bring him on. And did the Ravens budge? No, they didn't. And he was available then. Antonio Brown's been available this entire offseason. Have the Ravens budged? No, they haven't. And I do not expect them to. I, I would love if they did. Y'all already know, but it's, it's not going to happen. So Antonio Brown to the Ravens, it ain't going down. So some of the best options, and I know there's also Alshon Jeffrey that's out there as well. That, that would definitely be a Ravens move right there, signing Alshon Jeffrey. And he is another wide receiver. When he was good, he was good, but he's also been very, very banged up. Missed a lot of time due to injury. And it's been unfortunate. It's, it's one of the worst things in, in a football player's career. When you see you, they got all the talent in the world, man. But just injuries just kill their careers, man. Injuries just, they, they bring their careers from here to here quick. It can happen so fast. Again, the NFL stands for not for long. Not for long. But, again, Ravens, they, they, they shouldn't be off the hook. They shouldn't be done. And they, they, they should not be finished when it comes to their wide receiver room. Now, Barstool Banks, who again, he is plugged in with the Ravens. He knows his stuff. He calls it out like he sees it. And he done put us on a lot of stuff before it's actually happened. He said that the Ravens were keeping tabs on one Dolphins wide receiver, Devontae Parker. And that would be a very interesting name. Because I know my guy Malo, Malo he pointed out last week, he was like, whoa, the, the Dolphins, they just cut. Their left tackle, who they got from the Titans, I think his name was Isaiah Ford, and it's just hopefully he gets everything cleared up soon and just he can get back on track. But they just cut him uh, like a week ago, so he was going to play left tackle. So they don't have a left tackle. The Ravens could be in the market for another wide receiver. And the Dolphins, they have some nice picks, even though they just traded some of them to switch around with the Eagles and they trade with 49ers and all this stuff. But Dolphins still have some good picks, so... Doesn't it just make sense? 
little player for player adding some picks trade with Orlando Brown Jr. to the Dolphins. And Devontae Parker, he come to the Florida Ravens. And again, he would fit right in. He's been playing in Florida his entire career. So why not come over to the Florida Ravens? It will make sense. But yeah, Barstool Banks said that the Ravens have been keeping tabs on Devontae Parker. Now this was, he said this before they signed Sammy Watkins. So whether they are still keeping tabs on Devontae Parker like that, or the Sammy Watkins move sort of made them be like, okay, no, nah, we got our guy. It's yet to be determined. We'll see by the moves that they make. But another avenue where I really hope that this does not alleviate the Ravens and, and, and take away the pressure from the Ravens when it comes to the wide receiver position is in the draft. Because it could be. It, it, it could do that. Because, again, the Ravens could be like, all right, we got Sammy Watkins. What's the, we don't have to draft a receiver early. Man, we, we got him. And you could understand how they would think like that. You could because it could be like, all right, Sammy Watkins, he's 27, getting ready to be 28. So why would the Ravens draft another receiver early too? Why would they draft it in the first round? Why? Why? We got Sammy Watkins, first round draft pick, I believe. We got Hollywood. He was a first round draft pick. Duvernay is getting ready to come up. We still got Miles Boykin. Prochet's on the horizon. Deion Kane's coming up. Benjamin Victor, they on the way. We, we got plenty of receivers. Why would we draft another wide receiver to add to the mix there? For what? Raven's not off the hook at wide receiver yet, man. Not in my opinion. And again, they need to, if they're going to take a wide receiver, have to do it early. You have to. First round or maybe not at all. And again, for my same reasoning, because if they, if they draft the receiver anywhere after the first round, every round that passes and you don't draft the receiver, then the pressure, it, it, it just it's, it's less and less pressure to really put your work into that receiver and put your all into that receiver and really try to develop that receiver. Because if you draft them in the first round, that puts that pressure like, oh, this is a first round pick. All right, we got to be on point. If you draft them in the second round, it's like, okay, this is a second round pick. Yeah, he, he, we expect them to be good. He in the first rounder, but we, we still expect them to be good. Third round, them expectations just continue to drop. They continue to drop. And you know Ravens history when it comes to the wide receiver position. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. And the later Ravens receivers get drafted, the less and less emphasis is put on those wide receivers to succeed. Less and less. The best receivers in Ravens history that they drafted. Torrey Smith and Hollywood. Torrey Smith and Hollywood. Mark Clayton, he was all right. But Torrey Smith and Hollywood, they, they've been the best. Ravens have been, they've drafted quite a bit of receivers now. But Hollywood was a first round pick. Torrey Smith, he was a second round pick. So you see that pressure. It's no coincidence. Now Mark Clayton, he was a first round pick. Didn't quite work itself out. Travis Taylor, he was a first round pick. Didn't quite work itself out. But other than that, oh, Brashad Perryman. Shout out to Brashad Perryman. Now that was just a mixed match of a lot. It it yeah, it was a but you see, he went he went on and he did good with the Browns. He did his thing with the Jets. He did his thing with the Bucks. So Brashad Perryman, but he's shown like, hey, Ravens, y'all messed up. Y'all messed up. But that's nor here nor there. Shout out to Bashar Perryman. Y'all know that was my guy. Um, but anyway, Ravens, they don't need to be done yet. This Sammy Watkins move, this should not end the Ravens at the wide receiver position. It shouldn't. It doesn't need to. Because they still need a, 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 get another guy. Get another outside guy. Get another physical dominant outside guy. Another one, an aggressive one. Get one. And this now, depending on how they make this next move for another outside guy, this could determine a lot. Because if they trade for one, which I'm, I'm still waiting on it, if they trade for one, then I would say, okay, I ain't worried about the draft then. If they trade for another outside receiver, the draft pressure is off. And it's off from me too. I'm alleviating my pressure on the Ravens because if they trade for one and a young guy too, healthy guy too, then it's like, okay, you ain't got to go. You ain't got to overkill. Um, but if you draft one, then you don't necessarily need to trade for one. 
and and boom, you're, you're set. You're set. So, in my opinion, you can do either or and come out a winner with this. But you have to still do either or, even though you still, even though you sign Sammy Watkins, you still need to do either or. Sammy Watkins is not the end-all, be-all to this wide receiver situation with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, again, you still have Miles Boykin. Is he a slot receiver? No. Is he an outside receiver? Well, he sure got the frame for it. And I have seen some people actually call him a slot receiver because they feel like his route running is a little bit limited. They feel like his body control and the body movement is a little bit limited. So maybe if he was in the slot, there would be less a co less complicated route designs and whatnot for Miles Boykin, and, and he could work the middle of the field and whatnot, and it would just be better off for him. So, hey, it depends on what side of the lens you're looking at it from. But Miles Boykin, we still holding out hope for Miles Boykin. We, we certainly are. But we still do not want these Ravens to just be complacent. I don't want them to be complacent. Don't be complacent. They can't be complacent. They ain't, they ain't got the time to be complacent. Like, you, you are in win-now mode. You're in win, not even just win-now mode. You're in trying to win Super Bowl-now mode. We know you're a playoff team. You got a playoff quarterback, playoff running backs, playoff receivers too. But in order to advance past the playoffs, we need more. It's time to get better, man. It's, it, it's time to get better, get aggressive, get nasty, man. Get that dog on his team, man. Straight up dog. So, Ravens, we're watching. We are certainly watching. And we're waiting. And we're going to see what y'all boys do. We're going to see. But anyway, team, keep it clean before we get out of here. Real quick. No matter what moves the Ravens do or do not make, uh, make sure you keep it respectful, man. Make sure you respect people's families. Make sure you respect people just period. Because while we may not agree on all the moves that the Ravens front office makes, we may agree on some, disagree on some, there's no reason to be going at their family. There's no reason to be going at them in, in a disrespectful way. Even if you disagree with something they do, you know, no need to be disrespectful towards them. Because at the end of the day, they are still people. And that's something that I think a lot of fans fail to realize. Y'all made Eric DaCosta's wife, not y'all, but a lot. some people made Eric DaCosta's wife make her Twitter private. Like, really? Just because fans was like, they were getting so frustrated with what Eric DaCosta was and was not doing and what the Ravens were and were not doing that they were going at her. It's like, well, really? Y'all remember the whole Matt Skura thing? It's pitiful. And, and, and there have been some other things, too, but it should never be that serious, man. It, it, should, it should never be that nasty. All of them are people at the end of the day. Let's have some respect, man. I already know Team Keep It Clean got respect. I already know that. But let's try to... Put that respect, let's try to rub it off on everybody because it can go a long way. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. And again, thank you so much for 40,000 subscribers. Um, and, and like we said in another, another video the other day, there's a lot of people that's going through a lot of things right now. A whole lot of things right now. There's a lot of people out there that's stressed out. Um, they may be working crazy hours. They may have crazy shifts. Uh, they may be going through things with their families, their kids, their parents, anything. Um, be there for people. Send a text, send a call, send something. Let them know you're thinking about them. Hit them up, man. Let somebody know you love them. Let somebody know you appreciate them today. Uh, Cause everybody needs to hear that from time to time. Cause there's a lot of people that don't hear that too often. There's, there's really a lot, a whole lot that don't. They don't ever hear that. They don't hear from their kids. They don't hear from their family. They don't hear from their friends. They don't hear from their coworkers. They don't hear from anybody. But I'm letting y'all know today. I appreciate y'all. So thank you. Love y'all team. Keep it clean. Keep your heads up. And we out.